Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna talk about what is a sore subject for our print-on-demand businesses. We are gonna talk about probably what is the biggest downside and that is stolen designs. Like right when we get designs that start selling and start bringing in a little income, what happens? Well, we notice that there's five clones all of a sudden for sale on whatever marketplace we're selling on. Typically it's Amazon, right? So in this video, I wanna shed some light on my understanding of the mechanism that's used to replicate our stolen designs basically at scale, which understanding it I think is important so that we can then formulate a strategy of how to fight it, okay? So I'm gonna shed as much light as I can. I'm gonna draw from my experience working for eight years as a web developer and hopefully it's valuable. So why don't we get started? Real quick reminder, take advantage of my weekly print on demand giveaway. This week is sponsored by Merch Titans, Upload Automation, Merch Ninja, Research Tools, All Sunsets, Premium Graphics, and Bubble Scout, the only Redbubble niche research and validation tool. You'll find a link in the description to take advantage of the giveaway. Two winners are gonna be selected. So why did designs get stolen? Not to insult anybody's intelligence, but I think we're all aware that the people doing the stealing, they're really just trying to get paid, right? And if you think about it, their workflow is not too far from most of our workflows. Like, let's just hit the reset button for 10 seconds. Guys, we wanna make money selling things online. Doesn't even have to be print on demand. What do we do? Well, first, we figure out what people are buying, right? Because if we're selling things nobody's buying, we're gonna get zero sales, right? Or, or we have to spend a ton of money on marketing to introduce our product to people that didn't know it existed and then hope that it's good enough that they buy it, right? You have to have a compelling value proposition, all that good stuff, right? So we're not gonna try to sell something that people don't know exists and we're not gonna try to sell something that we can't validate people are buying. So the counterpart to that is we're gonna sell things that people are buying. When we do niche research, we're typically looking for uh, little pockets of opportunity right? We don't, the only difference is like, we don't go in and just start like stealing people's designs. We say, okay, people are buying t-shirts that say Patria Evita. So let's make our own take of that niche, right? Let's go add our own design and then put the text, something like that, right? Anyways, the thieves, what they tend to do is they tend to go and look at the marketplaces and look at these data points. They look at bestseller rank because that obviously is indicative of hey, this product has sold before. Any product that's made a sale on Amazon, we know has a BSR, a bestseller rank. Now, BSR is a relative value, so the lower it is, the higher the sales velocity. Now, what I haven't mentioned yet is that the people that are the thieves are actually not doing this manually. What they do is they write applications. Now, it doesn't mean that people don't do this manually, but I think the the most common use case of, hey, our design just made a sale and now it's been replicated on Amazon 10 times, it's typically gonna be web crawlers. They're writing bots that can scan Amazon's catalog, meet the criteria, which is whatever they write in really, but um, it can just be that, hey, a product that didn't have a BSR now has a BSR, or hey, look for a BSR under a million. You can do all this programmatically. And if you see it, then, you know, the web crawler goes, and by the way, web crawlers, they're not like you and I, <laughs> they work all day, all night at a much faster pace. Okay. And yeah, you do have to get a little bit tricky when it comes to like crawling Amazon, because if you like try in your web browser right now, open a bunch of tabs up on Amazon, what's going to happen is they're going to throttle you because they don't want people just scraping their catalog constantly. Uh, and they have like APIs in the back end. And I mean, who knows these web crawlers could be using those too. I doubt they are, but, um, anyways, we don't need to get too technical when they see something that they validate as like a, a target that's worthwhile. So I just chose a random t-shirt here. This is a bestseller. So this shirt actually is probably not even a threat of getting the design pulled down and re-uploaded. Do you guys know why? Because this is a bestseller on Amazon. Where were we like two seconds ago? 11,000 BSR, 1700 reviews. A shirt like this, you could re-upload 100,000 more times. And guess what? This shirt that says bestseller on Amazon, it's not gonna lose anything to those uh, other replications because it is cemented at the top of search results. So that's one of the benefits of being the incumbent with a lot of sales history. Where it gets to be a problem is if these web crawlers can find your sale or find your product really quickly after the first few sales or even after the first sale and then replicate it because you haven't really cemented yourself, okay? Now, what they can then do 
is steal your design. Now, how do they do that? I'm not 100% sure on how they like strip the background color out and keep the foreground. Like that part, I don't know. Like I'm assuming at this case or at today's day, you know, the year is 2021. There's probably some application out there that can do this. Um, and I mean, I, I have every reason to believe it exists because we see that this type of um, thievery, is that a word, thievery, uh, that it's happening regularly, right? And I just wanted to show you, you guys, I'm sure everybody watching this, you've shopped on Amazon. You've hovered over a listing. What happens when you hover over it? You get this big pop-up behind me of a higher resolution version of the product. And guess what? With that version, it's like if, if you can see it in your web browser, just think of it this way. If you can see it in your web browser, that means that it's been downloaded and exists on the client side of your computer. That means it's on your machine somewhere. If it's on your machine, it's on the web crawler's machine. That's, you know, in, the, in my head, it's like the web crawler is the real thief, although they don't need money, right? Somebody programmed it to steal the design, re-upload it, and make money. So it's really a human that we should be mad at, but like, we don't know who those people are. We at least know how the web crawlers work. So they've got this high resolution version of our image. Then all they need to do is strip the background off, which I'm assuming, again, it's 2021. I'm sure that technology exists. And then they re-upload. And they do all of this at scale in a way that we cannot compete with as humans. Like, even trying to report them. Imagine trying to do that, guys. Like, they'll take this design, they'll put it on, most likely they're not putting it on Merch by Amazon because we know they'll get in trouble, they'll lose their account. But they could be. You know, there's definitely ways of getting, like, Merch by Amazon accounts if you lose yours. Uh, they'll put it on Etsy. They'll put it on Shopify. They'll put it on Amazon through Seller Central. They'll put it on eBay. They'll put it on Redbubble. These are the ones that I've seen firsthand myself. Uh, I'll never forget. I think I talked about this in the most recent top five niches of the week. Like the first time that I saw one of my designs, because I don't really spend a lot of time looking for thieves of my designs, but like I found it on Google randomly. Like I Googled, well, not on Google, but like I Googled the design because I was like, I wonder if anybody took my design because it was like a best-selling fantasy football one I, I did tell you guys the story it was like one of my favorite fantasy football shirts i basically made it for myself and i was like this is like so loud and in your face and it's you know fantasy football it's about smack talk right and i found it on another like shopify store that actually ranked on google so um because that's the other thing if you go make a shopify store it's going to be tough to get traffic but here's the thing if you're using web crawlers that are just stealing a thousand and then a thousand turns to 10,000, 10,000 turns to a hundred thousand different designs. And again, you steal the keywords too. You know, these bots that do this, it's, it's performing a copy paste. Basically it's the equivalent of that. Um, you write scripts that can do this and they'll pull it right into your Shopify website, like a skilled programmer or somebody who bangs their head against the wall enough times can make this work. Um, and again, too, you don't need to be like that skilled of a programmer because there people are releasing kind of like workflows. Like, do you guys remember when I did a, a video on Zapier? Um, this website, Zapier, I'm, by the way, I'm not saying that Zapier can be used to steal print on demand designs, but this website, Zapier.com, like this is basically replacing your need of uh, knowledge of programming. And services like this are out there. So all I'm really trying to illustrate is that this will probably become more commonplace because you don't need to be the smartest person in the world to execute it. And um, and then from our side, the seller perspective, how do we fight back against bots that do this while we're sleeping? Do we sit there and manually try to find our designs and then report them, which is going to, that process is going to vary on each platform. Also, some of these guys who get the report that they were reported They'll find you and then they'll screw you over by reporting you because a lot of these platforms are not, it doesn't go across a human's desk for them to be like the arbiter of who's right and who's wrong. So then you both lose. So it's a slippery slope. That's why I don't spend a lot of time dealing with the thieves. You know, it's just, it, it is what it is. And the ideal scenario is like the design right there. I'm not old, I'm classic, where you've got so many sales that you've cemented yourself at the top. And I know that's easier said than done. But, um, you know, any hey, guys, if you have any feedback, any thing that's working for you as far as how to fight back against this, let me know in the comments below. That would actually be appreciated because I seriously learn from you guys when you write me comments in the description or not in the description, but in the in the comment section. Also, I just wanted to um, share that I had published a video on this. Maybe I don't know if I had to guess six to eight months ago where somebody had published this was actually somebody that I was doing like mentoring one-on-one -on -one because they were like an artist that wanted to bring in some print-on-demand sales for their original artwork. And this was a crazy story because it wasn't a pixel-for-pixel -pixel th like theft of their design. Basically, they had that design on the left-hand side. 
make a sale within 24 hours there was like 15 replications of a similar design but not the exact same design so somebody made like a crappier version of it and uploaded it to 15 fbm print on demand products through seller central in 24 hours which leads me to believe it wasn't a bot maybe that was like a human so it's like how the heck did you even find this original design that literally doesn't make sense to anybody other than if you know the artist it's just so i don't know but that that to me was like a crazy story and um yeah i'll link to that by the way in the youtube cards right here in case you guys want to watch that video where i basically tell the in-depth story but yeah that's what i wanted to cover in this video this is not a happy video it kind of sucks because it's a little bit daunting i don't know how we push back but again let me know if you have thoughts in the comments below also before i sign off just wanted to remind you guys that in the description you can sign up for my seven day amazon merch completely free mini course where i'll send one lesson a day to your inbox also while you're down there join my amazon merch facebook group growing rapidly and tons of great discussion every single day love to see you in there and last but not least i wrote a full amazon merch course showing you how i took my account from tier 10 to tier 200 000 everything is covered and you get access to me basically on demand if you have any questions so um check that out in the description thank you guys for watching make sure you like and subscribe and i will see you guys tomorrow